So today we're going to talk about YouTube, which is one of my favorite social networks. You may think about it as the place where you're going to find the latest music videos, or the latest funny cat videos, or the latest this and that kind of videos, music, um, instructional videos and such. But YouTube is a very, very vibrant social network, and some say also a search engine. As I mentioned previously, uh, people use YouTube to search for things. Just today, this morning, I searched on YouTube how to fix a doorbell, because my doorbell is broken, and I saw it looked pretty easy, so I'm going to try it today. If I don't show up next week, I might have electrocuted myself. <laughs> but I got a video on YouTube on how to fix my doorbell, so I searched YouTube to find an instructional video. So YouTube is a search engine slash social network. It's a social network in that we can create profiles, follow accounts, get followers, get views, all of that stuff just like Facebook, Twitter, etc. But a lot of us don't tap into YouTube as creators. A lot of us probably use YouTube as consumers. We watch a video, we watch another one, and a few hours later we should have been doing our work and we watch a bunch of YouTube videos. That's what we want for our, from our followers. We want to captivate followers to watch this video and the next video and the, and the next one. Well, if it was difficult for us maybe to wrap our minds around Twitter or Facebook or, or, or Google Plus and such, now we're throwing in video, throwing in multimedia. The main purpose of YouTube is video. So that's a challenge in, in and of itself. That's why today we're going to spend time to get acclimated a bit with, a, with creating a video, very short, simple video, and then, of course, creating a YouTube account and uploading it and optimizing our, 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 our video because whereas other social networks like um, Twitter, Facebook and such are very ephemeral, very short attention span. YouTube, I believe, is much more evergreen in that you don't need to be posting something every day, every week, but once a month, once a quarter is better. If you're posting once a month on Twitter, you're not doing it right. If you're posting once a month on Pinterest, you're not doing it right. If you're posting once a month on YouTube, you're doing well because you're putting content out there on a regular basis that doesn't zoom by like a tweet, like a Pinterest pin. It can be there, it can be found easier. In Twitter you have to scroll back through a timeline, maybe search. On Pinterest there's so many tweets. There's organization with pin boards, sure. On Facebook you post something, it gets lost, more stuff is always coming out. And not that YouTube doesn't have some of those issues, but YouTube when we create our profile, all of our content is much more easily found, so it's a bit more evergreen. Let's look at the handout that I gave you, Campos Social 2 YouTube. Let's open up that uh, YouTube uh, handout. We can uh, print it later uh, when I turn on the printer, but let's look at this handout. YouTube is the granddaddy of all video sharing sites, founded in 2005 and featuring a video from the San Diego Zoo. The very first YouTube video, 10 years ago, was at the San Diego Zoo. YouTube has gone on to host countless videos and create many viral sensations. YouTube is a great social network to tap into because it's integrated with Google Plus and we can share anything. So YouTube, if you didn't know, is owned by Google. And so is Google Plus and Gmail and... Uh, all of these platforms so they're they're very much integrated together and when you do a search on Google um, they often show you your your plain old link results but they often also show you video results because they're so integrated so what if you have a blog post on how to do something and a one minute 45 second 30 second video to accompany that blog post. When someone searches how to fix a doorbell, they might be more inclined to watch that 30 second video, that 60 second video, than to read a blog post, even though the blog post might not be that long, it might be very concise, but video is becoming much, much more popular. Um, so raise your hands. How many of you have recently, in the last week, read a blog post? Okay, comparing. How many of you have recently, within the last week, watched a video? Okay, just a small sample here. More people watching a video than reading. So that's why it behooves us to think about YouTube as also a viable marketing uh, strategy. 
our setup is we're going to create a YouTube account for our business and we will see that very similar to Google Plus and Facebook uh, we can create a personal or a business YouTube but usually if we've got a business Google account then we can create the YouTube channel for it pretty easily. We don't technically need a business YouTube account to create uh, for, our, for our business page, that is. We can have personal or we can have business. But if you took my previous class, last month we talked about creating a, YouTube, uh, a Google Plus account for our business. So we will use that for our YouTube channel. If you weren't here previously and you didn't create a Google Plus business page, that's okay. We can still look at creating one for personal. And you can create as many as you want, as many Google Plus pages, as many YouTube pages as you want. They don't have to be focused on business. So we'll do this together. We'll log into Google Plus, switch to your business, and how to create the account, etc. We'll do that soon. I want to talk in a, a little bit of theory first and then um, actual practice because if the point of YouTube is to share videos, well you need a video to share. So first here I'm going to show six examples of uh, types of videos and this is not exhaustive. There are many other types of YouTube videos but here's some six examples that I chose that could be useful for you as a business. So for example the unboxing video. Let's see if this plays properly my volume. The unboxing type of video. So you don't have to you don't have to click on these. I'll show them to you. You can click if you'd like. But I'm going to show you these different types of YouTube videos. This is the unboxing video. How many of you have heard of that term before? Unboxing. Not too many. Okay, we'll see what it is right now. as this loads up, an unboxing video is literally a video where you unbox something, usually a product. Uh, video's private. Hmm. Okay, no problem. Let me just choose another thing here. Unboxing... Uh, I don't know, Xbox. Okay, just gonna choose one at random. Unboxing the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So what an unboxing After months is, traveling, I'm Jack came video. home and was inspired by his Good grandma's address. homemade chicken. And couldn't wait to share it with the world. Southern style all white meat chicken. The Homestyle Ranch Chicken Club. What is up guys, it's SS Modern Warfare here, Gamer Tab Banjo Chicken, and welcome back to a unboxing video, which is a bit different. So what I've got here is a Xbox One and a PS4. Yes, this video is basically going to be this person opening up the boxes of his brand new uh, game systems. He's going to take them out of the box, he's going to open it up, he's going to show you it came with this, it has this, and all of that. You might think this is utterly the most boring video I've ever, th I've ever heard of. But it's got 37,000 views. 37,000 people watched it and gave 520 thumbs up as opposed to 59 thumbs down. So this is a viable type of video to create. Think about it in terms of your own business, Victor's Bakery. I could be unboxing the ornate little box that I ship my cupcakes in. So I'm showing my particular product is being sold in this beautiful little box. This is what you're going to get when you buy it. Question. I don't understand why 37,000 people would want to watch someone open up Many reasons why. One of them would be that let's say someone is wanting to make up their mind in this case. Right now the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are the big competing game systems. So perhaps someone that wants to buy the new one is undecided. They watch this video. He's not just literally going to be silent and unboxing it. He's unboxing it and most likely giving opinions, saying this controller feels very sturdy. I know that this game is compatible with that system. He's also opinionating on the product. So people could be making up their mind to buy a particular product or not. And so he's an expert in the game, so he's 
He's a random person, but that's the great thing about YouTube and all of social media. Every random person can be an expert, especially if they find a niche. So right here, he's tapped into a niche, a topic of video games, which are a billion-dollar industry, multi-billion-dollar industry. So many people want to know this. Um, they want to know, oh, look, it comes with this, so I don't have to buy one. Uh, it has this particular feature that now uh, the old system doesn't have. Um, a few of you mentioned some opinions. Can can I hear that again? What were your opinions on why? Yes. Like you don't have to read the. Could be an unboxing. An unboxing could further also set up the system. Sure. I just spent like three hundred dollars on a cleansing product, mm -hmm. and it's always like, "What is it? What is it in the box?" And all that. And I'm waiting for the box to open it up. And so, like to get a. Idea. Now to, I can see to, a video. What's inside this product? Or this box that I spent money that I never knew what was going to be in there. So also sort of like reviewing or, or giving your opinion on it and such? Yeah. Very cool. And over here. I think your kids use this all the time. I've learned with my son on YouTube for um, um, photography equipment. Oh, oh. Let me see what is the next, uh, what they do. And mm. I'm always doing this unboxing. Yeah, so these, these examples that I'm going to give are going to really fit better with different kinds of products. It's, in a sense, up to you to decide which of these types of videos might be useful to you. But as I said, um, as the seller of those cupcakes, I could unbox my own box of cupcakes to show this is what you're going to get. What I could also get is I could solicit my fans, my customers, for them to make unboxing videos for me. I could tweet. Hey everyone, unbox. Did you get one of our cupcakes? Unbox it on YouTube and send us the link. Because sometimes people simply want internet fame, fleeting internet fame. And so if they create a 30 second video of them unboxing my cupcakes and I retweet it, or I share it on, on YouTube or whatever, I repost it on Vine or whatever, I'm giving that customer a little bit of internet fame, a little bit of validation, a little bit of an ego boost, whatever they're trying to get out of using social media. What I'm getting out of it is I'm showing a happy customer using my product. So I'm getting, in a sense, free advertising by inviting other people to unbox my stuff. Right here, this is Xbox and PlayStation getting free advertising for their product and increasing their billion dollar business. Let's see here. Unboxing uh, air conditioner. Hercules DJ control air unboxing. Air conditioner unboxing. Unboxing large air conditioner. 15,000 BTU. So after the ad. This video is to show you how to get an air conditioner out of the box that it comes in. And obviously this is a really, really heavy item, so unlike every other box, you don't just open the top and take it out. So here's how you do it. First off, you cut these straps. So he's doing, at the same time, a sort of tutorial, simply how to open the box. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he's unboxing it to show what's inside, and I suppose mixing in tutorial aspects and all of that. Boring. No, 6,700 views. Now the thumbs up, thumbs down is kind of different there, 11 thumbs up, 11 thumbs down. But yeah, air conditioners, not that interesting. Uh, but uh, this is a particular one of nine minutes long. The previous one, how much was that game one? Uh, 16 minutes long. So here's a few relatively long form uh, videos, 16 minutes, 5 minutes. Here's one about uh, apparently 22 minutes. The Geek Redneck got an LG 12,000 BTU air conditioner, and he's got 7,000 views on that. Um, and he's got 20 thumbs up on it. So this is apparently a 20-minute long video on that. Now, oftentimes people are not going to sit from beginning to end, but guess what? You can skip around. You can fast forward. You can stop on a part that seems interesting and watch that for a few minutes. So we're going to see that, depending on your audience and various factors, What's a good length of a YouTube video? I can't answer that. It's going to depend on your audience. Perhaps if you've got a tutorial, yes, someone is going to sit and watch 45 minutes nonstop. But perhaps your audience is much more into short, quick snippets of info, so 60 seconds, 
30 seconds. This is the unboxing video. Obviously, I could go on and on. You can look up examples of anything plus unboxing. Uh, let's think of something ludicrous to unbox. Know, donuts. Unboxing. Whipple Craft and Fun Creme Desserts Donut Macaroons Food. DIY Craft Toy Unboxing Fun. Uh, that is not a typo. That has 3 million views. So this particular video... We've got the super adorable Whipple set where we can make yummy, chocolatey, yummy, tasty, frosted donuts and macaroons. It's the cream-filled creations. Now, even though these donuts look absolutely tasty and delicious, they are actually just fake donuts that we can make with this really thick whip frosting. And... All right, so a very bubbly personality showing you step-by-step -step unboxing it, using it, 3 million views, um, 10,000 thumbs up. 1,000 thumbs down, and I haven't mentioned it yet, but as we look at these different profiles, this particular profile has 1.4 million followers. So every time they post something, 1.4 million people could see it. That's why there's so many uh, thumbs up and such. This, of course, doesn't happen overnight. Various factors go into play about your viewership and everything. Let me go back just to compare this one. He's got 3,000 uh, subscribers. So every time he posts something, 3,000 people could see it. And then going back to that, uh, that air conditioner, he's got 80 subscribers. Even with 80 subscribers, he's got 6,000 views. So it doesn't always correlate that you need a lot of subscribers to get a lot of views. The video itself, on its own, could reach an audience. Obviously, if you have an audience in subscribers, followers, you could then further get more views, but it doesn't have to correlate. This guy right here, he may not be an expert, but he's got 46,000 followers, subscribers, with those views. This is one example. Let's look at some other examples. Any questions on the unboxing type of video? Screen capture tutorial. So obviously this really works more if you're trying to do some sort of tutorial on screen. Let me pull up my example here. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and we're going to talk about Android development. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm recording what I'm doing. This is not live, this is an old video. But I'm recording something that I'm doing on screen. Everything that I'm doing on screen is then being recorded and my voice and, and everything. So if you watch the videos from my various classes, you're going to see this type of video in action. Think about how you could do this for your business. If I'm a web design company, I could show off a quick two-minute video on how to install WordPress or a WordPress plugin. I could do a uh, a this is only two this is only three minutes. I could do a 45-minute vi uh, video on how to develop an Android app. I'm recording my screen, my voice, and showing what I'm doing step by step. That's what I was about to say. So this particular one um, that I did that video and what the videos I usually do is this software called Open Screen, or I'm sorry, Open Broadcaster. Open Broadcaster. It's free software for Windows or Mac and it's designed to record your screen. So my setup is that I've got this web camera. I just use it for the microphone. I'm not recording my, my face. I'm using, I'm using a web camera. If you've got a laptop, you've probably got a webcam and a microphone built in. Then I'm using this free software, Windows or Mac, and it records everything on my screen. So what I'm doing here is being recorded. Later on, I'll upload it. That's how I created the video example here, and that's how these types of videos are, are, are also created. Let's say I look up uh, how to install Windows 10. Most of the time you're going to see a screencast. You're going to see here, 4 minutes, 30, uh, four minutes 27 seconds long, how to easily download and install Windows 10. This one's got uh, 3,004. Uh, 345,000 views, 935 likes, a um, bunch of subscribers, 
but this person is recording. Type 1 and Windows 8.1 users. So it's a very exciting day. Now it's released to the public so we can download and install it on our key or USB entire operating key. So it's say six or seven years. However, so same sort of concept. He's got some sort of screen recorder and he's recording everything he's doing on the screen, his mouse movements, his voice, various types of software to do that. Um, and so when I ran this a couple minutes ago just to try it out, it did take about 30 to 45 seconds to load. And here we go, we get Windows 10 set up. What do you want to do? Do we want to upgrade this PC now? or do? We and so he's, uh, he also had a screen annotation right there. Something popped up on the screen to, uh, to show you extra info. And actually, uh, screen annotations in YouTube are pretty powerful because not only can you put text on your video, but you can make it an active link. So he's got a link to another one of his YouTube videos to show you this method, the uh, upgrade method, instead of the, the clean install method. So we can link our YouTube videos together. We can have various hotspots on the video that then take a user to another video. So keeping them on your channel longer, maybe getting them to subscribe. Once you've got subscribers, you've got a captive audience. And just like every network we've talked about, once you've got a captive audience, you can market to them. You can tech support them. You can uh, tell them about the latest um, coupons and products and everything. Uh, YouTube is able to create a basic transcript, but it's because it's machine learning, the transcript can be pretty off. But when we get to it, we'll see that I like to use the transcript that YouTube creates as a starting point for me then to write the correct words. So we'll be able to caption our videos, which is very useful because let's say I'm at work and I want to watch a, a video, but I can't hear it. So if I turn on captions or transcript, I can watch the video, read what's going on, and therefore actually enjoy the video. That takes much more effort, of course, uh, but we'll, we'll mention it too. Yes? Does it actually put it in a document, or it's just reading along as you are watching the video? On YouTube, it's going to be, it's like going to be subtitled like in a, uh, like on a movie. Right. It's going to be below it. So there's, to my knowledge at the moment, there's no way to download the transcript yet. I guess that would be technically a transcript that it is downloadable. I meant more that it has captions, right. not a transcript. So for example here, I've shown a lot of videos with a lot of um, with a lot of views and a lot of followers and all of that, but you know you're you're always you always have the ability, even as a little guy to to get views and such. This is one that I did for my company. This has got five hundred and fifty three views. We've got at the moment on this channel six subscribers, but um, this is gonna another example for PMP Interactive let's build an Android app in Visual Studio in five minutes well first we need to go online and download Visual Studio 2015 it's the latest version from Microsoft so in my case so you might have to wait a while let it download let it install choose any file so okay another example uh, a screen recording type of uh, screen capture type of uh, video in which you literally capture what's on the screen with a variety of um, software and for a variety of purposes and oftentimes they have to do with showing you step by step how to do something on a computer. So for a lot of us we might not really need to do that kind of video but this is another possible another viable type of video. We've got the how-to video. Sometimes the unboxing video is mixed with the how-to, and oftentimes the screen capture is a how-to video. It's just that the screen capture is literally about capturing the screen. A how-to, as we'll see an example here, doesn't have to be about your computer screen. It can be about anything else. Let me show that example. Hi, I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone, and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First, you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There's several different... 
So she's going to teach you how to plant tomatoes. Now this one is one of the most well-produced videos I've seen so far, and I'm, and I'm going to show you. This one is professional. This one's got a tripod, first of all. This one's got it pointed at, at, the, at the personality. It's on a tripod. It's shot well, good lighting, good background. Look at how the video then cuts to different shots. Close up, wider shot. This one's, a, this one's simply a picture. That's the actual video. Here's a picture zooming in. Text. Uh, another picture zooming into it. So this is one of the more most complex ones. This takes a lot of effort to do. The other ones, unboxing, just turn on your camera, have someone hold your camera, do the unboxing. That's it. That can obviously be done much more professionally. Uh, this one's mixing static shots, handheld shots, text. Uh, music. There's music going on in the background too. We're gonna dig a deep hole. Tomatoes are one of the few plants that can be planted very deep. So this is very well produced. Uh, obviously it takes a lot of effort, time, skill, and oftentimes hardware. You're not gonna be able to get the best kind of uh, video oftentimes uh, with, uh, with a cell phone, although these are getting better and better and better all the time. You can probably record HD quality. Now, HD quality still varies in the quality of your lens and your audio and all of that, but probably here, I think I saw she had a little microphone clipped on, because one of the big secrets, two of the big secrets about good videos is uh, light and sound. Well, that's a video, isn't it? Visuals and audio. But what I mean is recording a person's voice well. If you've got great visuals but terrible voice, you've got a terrible video especially if it really is important for people to hear the person's voice. So I might have an amazing camera here. I might have the newest iPhone, the newest Samsung, whatever, with amazing visuals. But if I'm standing here and I'm trying to record my speaker in the back of the room giving their presentation, it'll look amazing, sound terrible. Therefore, it's a terrible video. So coupling good sound with good visuals is very, very important. And like on this, most likely they've got a person off the edge of the screen with a real microphone to record the voice really well. It's going to be hard to record people with just your cell phone unless you're close. So if, you know, if I'm like that far away here, uh, that my voice should hit the microphone on this pretty well, so I'll be okay doing that. If someone is holding it for me like that, I could probably get a good sound recording. But think about that. Sound is one of the most important things that you get right on your video if you if you're speaking especially Question. yes um, how is her doing a tomato video how is she making money or is she benefiting what is she just doing this to be nice there's or so many reasons why uh, why there could be youtube videos one could be she's apparently got a channel called uh, ev stone organics that sounds like a company selling organic food so if she's selling organic tomatoes, if someone wants to be a backyard farmer, here's a video on how to set that up. Um, so you could be showing your particular product how to use it. If you've got a, uh, a product you're selling, you could be simply in it for, for, to be nice and to, and to educate people. That's also what a lot of people do, give out these free videos just because they have a talent that they want to share perfectly viable. And then also, the people that are putting out these videos, not really selling a product, you can still make money off of YouTube. You can make money off of your YouTube videos. So probably she has her account monetized, which is the technical term, to be able to gain money off of your YouTube videos. So based on views, based on clicking on the ad, all of that stuff, you could make money off of your YouTube videos. So we'll talk about that also, how to activate monetization. So I saw one YouTube video here on a particular topic, and YouTube is, of course, going to recommend many more videos related. So if you create many videos on a particular topic, YouTube will more likely show more of your videos on the sidebar here. Perhaps she doesn't have any more specifically about tomatoes. I don't see any others from that particular company. But oftentimes, 
you've got two or three or five videos related, YouTube will then suggest coming up next more videos from that channel. And the default nowadays of YouTube, which I personally don't like, but as a company I like this, nowadays by default there's this option called autoplay. When this video is done, unless I stop it, another video is coming. So Roger's Garden. Roger's Gardens is coming. When that video is done, most likely then the next video is coming. That's on by default. I can turn it off right here. Most people will never realize this. So when this video ends, let me show you what it looks like. So right here, E.B. Stone, buy these products, get good tomatoes. Or click below in the description for a free PDF recipe. Free PDF recipe. The video is over. Next, coming up next, how to plant tomatoes with David Rizzo. Cancel it. Most people will not notice this, or many people will not notice this, and then suddenly they get a new video. If I had more videos on this particular topic, the next suggested video might be another one of my videos. So um, that's good. Uh, what could also happen is I created yet another How to Grow Tomatoes video with a different spin on things perhaps, and maybe my tomato video could also show up here. You don't necessarily have to be one of these 100,000 views types of videos. You can have a couple dozen or whatever, and you could still appear in that coming up list. Another professional one. You've got some text overlay, little static shot, a wide shot. Let's hear if his sound is good here. Gardens, and today I'm going to show you how to plant a tomato plant. When choosing a tomato plant, I always look for a tomato that has a really straight trunk with a lot of new growth. Audio-wise, it seems to sound pretty good. Uh, you get a lot of ambient sound, though. You get that, that, that sound of, like, you know, the, the, the world outside. When you are picking out a tomato, what you like using them for? Which may be distracting. There's that low or that high, uh, you know, just general shh sound in the background. Like a larger slicing tomato, like a uh, Neves Azorian Red is a good late season slicer. Um, this earlier variety... He's got his logo at the top right at all times there because again, like any social network, things are probably going to get shared. So if your YouTube video gets shared by someone else on their Twitter, on their Pinterest, whatever, if I've got my logo on the original video that helps to brand it, maybe my web address in the corner, you know, some sort of branding to get people to know this, is, was, this was created by that company, looks really good, let me go follow them on YouTube. This one's about 4 minutes 40 seconds. So how to, how to plant, how to build that IKEA desk, uh, how to do just about everything. A few years ago uh, I bought a light tent. I like to do photography uh, for my business and for fun, I bought a light tent, which is just basically a big, well, a cube actually. It's this big box uh, with uh, three, uh, no, with, uh, yeah, with three closed sides. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, no, with, well, with all the sides closed except one. And um, that allows you to control the light. A subject can then stand inside or sit inside of the box. You shine the lights in, you get nice even lighting on the person. So that cube is about six feet by six feet, so a person could get inside of it. And it folds up to about that size, really small. So when I unfolded it, it got up really big, really nice. Okay, time to put it away at the end of the day. I, ha I had a hard time closing it up. How do you get it back to that little size when it's six feet? So I looked it up. I went to the, I went to the um, company's uh, website, and then he said, how to close the light cube. And he had a video embedded on his website hosted on YouTube. That's a viable thing to do. You can have a website, you can have all your videos on YouTube, let YouTube deal with being up 24 hours a day, hosting your video, having the bandwidth, um, dealing with the spam and everything. Have your videos on YouTube and then simply embed your video on your site. We'll get into more detail later on that, but embedding is related to the sharing right here, share, embed. That's how you can uh, put your video from YouTube onto your site. We'll talk about it later, but that's what I did. I had to look up how do you close this cube, because it's six feet, and how do you get it down to one foot? A how-to video helped me. 
This one is the one that I think many, many, many of you, most of you, would be able to create. How to do something with my product. Uh, you know, how to get a good realtor. How to uh, bake that donut. How to whatever. We've got the next kind of video here, a review video. Should be pretty self-explanatory. Let's see an example. T-Mobile now extended after the advertisement. We're not going to get we're not going to be able to get into it, but we can also put our own videos as commercials for other people to see. It's more complex, but let's see here. Dot com and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole tech world buzzing. We want to really break down what this is. So this is a video, uh, this is a review of this product, Google Glass. How many of you have heard of Google Glass? If you haven't, it's Google's uh, experimental wearable computer. That's a computer that you put on your face. And it has a uh, little camera, and it also has a, 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 a video screen that is projected outside that only you can see. So here they're reviewing it. Now the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these. You have to be part of Google's Explore program, and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap. But what this is really for is for developers, uh, you know, people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass. And this is about 1 minute 43 seconds. Um, so doing a quick review on this particular product, obviously not as long as a full 500 word review, but um, let's say you couple your blog post with the video. I make these look good. Check it out. All right. But the first thing you have to do is, first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob, and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on. And I'm going to start by saying, OK, glass. OK, let's give this a shot. OK, glass. I have a variety of options. And here I'm going to say, record a video. And you'll see my screen change. And now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey, boys, say what's up. Wave hi. There you go, right? Now, you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, or places. And it does require a data connection. So that means you're going to have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future. And we've never seen anything like this. But wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? You're going to kick it later tonight, man? Jay. <laughs> but really, this is the future, and you know it can only get better. For CNET. So this is a review. It's uh, a little bit more professional. CNET is one of the big uh, names in tech reviews and such. They've got one million subscribers there, and uh, so it's they've got they had two camera two camera operators right there recording Brian uh, while he does the review and different shots. Close up shot here, front shot side shot. They had a few shots from inside of the device. I think I saw one over here somewhere. They had graphics, so some computer graphics here to to show the item. Uh, again, much more complex, but you could do a review uh, type of video as well. You get your camera, you put it on a, a stable surface, because uh, you know shaky camera is not too fun. So you put it on a stable surface, and if your phone stands up like this, you know, you can you can set that up like that and then record yourself. Then that gives me to the, gets me to the second part of a good video. I said audio is very important. You need to hear what someone is saying, but you also need to see what someone is doing. And here they've got two professional type of cameras, but actually nowadays you can use these Canon or Nikon cameras, these, these uh, consumer grade uh, cameras that take photos. Oftentimes they have very high quality video capabilities as well. Now they've got it inside of a shoulder rig and they've got advanced microphones and all of that, but if you own one of those uh, Canon or Nikon or Sony or Pentax kinds of cameras that take really good photos, they often have a video mode. Explore that to create higher quality videos. But notice, you might not notice them here, this thing and that thing up there, what are these things here? Lights. lights. Two big lights so that Brian looks nice and bright and you've got a professional video. So obviously those are hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, but you can get a very similar effect by being near a window. So if I'm near one of those windows or out this door over here where I get sunlight coming in and I'm getting recorded right here, this light that's hitting me here is going to be way better than me being over here where there's no light on me. You might see me okay, but the camera is less forgiving than the human eye. So to get good, uh, to get good videos, you also have to think about the lighting. 
if you're in your room with the only lighting is the is the lamp in the corner of the room, your video is going to look terrible. You may then sound really well, but if your video doesn't look well, then again, it's not a good video. You need to have good sound, good light in your video. And you don't have to have professional gear to do all of this stuff. You can use these cell phones that we've got in our pockets are really well, but you have to take into account if you're using a cell phone, how close or far are you from the person and can you hear them? And then also how well is the lighting to record them? Let's see another one here. It's all about doing SEO for your videos. So um, when we create the videos and we upload them, we'll see that it's simply not uploading your video and you're done. We have to talk about giving it a good title, putting keywords, writing a description. So we have then a whole art and science then of YouTube SEO, which we'll get to. And on that one on the words, it says Google defines every word at its I.O. conference. What's an I.O.? What is I.O. still There's a bunch of tech conferences all the time, and Google ho hosts one called I.O., which it, it doesn't matter what it stands for, it's just it's Google's conference, one of oh, Google's okay. conferences. I.O. is in out, which is okay. technical. Uh, computer science stuff. So it's just Google, one of Google's conferences, the I.O. conference by Google. So they held a conference. Twitter today held a conference. Their conference is called Flight, because they got a little bird and it flies. Flight. Yeah, and cardboard dwellers. Because right. now VR is opened up to cardboarders. Assuming you have a $500 smartphone. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this was uh, given out at I.O., and we have one. Uh, our friend Matt Braga acquired it. Thanks, Braga. He's, he's, he's our favorite Canadian. And it's Google Cardboard. You might have heard about this. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny because uh, Samsung was rumored to be doing a, a VDs at I.O. Uh, it's this package here. Yeah. And they're actually... So that little piece of cardboard is one of Google's newest technologies, if you, if you can't believe it. Just keep watching. Instructions on their website, I believe it's, what is it? G.co forward slash. Do you have glue? Uh, we have some Elmer's glue here, don't we? It says we need glue. Oh boy. Well, let's open this up. This is what it's supposed to look like, this picture right here. So when it's assembled, um, the phone will fit in there and it will be some type of virtual reality display. We have Basically, this thing unfolds and comes together and eventually it looks like really bulky goggles and what you do with it then see it's coming together once you put it all together then you put your phone into into the appropriate place and then you'll be wearing your phone on your face in a cardboard way cardboard box and with the right software and such you can watch virtual reality youtube videos so that's some of the latest stuff i saw that at comic con i went to comic con and they were giving away something similar to this and uh the sci-fi channel uh, was doing a, a brand new series about space exploration and so they were giving away their version of this type of thing and you uh, put your phone into it, you download the sci-fi app and then you put it on your face and then you watch this virtual reality space thing. So this video is just showing you uh, a review of this particular product, Google Cardboard and obviously very well produced. They've got a studio, they've got cameras, they've got multiple angles and everything. Uh, but a simple review again. I could look up reviews on a variety of things and you'll see many, many YouTube reviews. Question? So, what I'm concerned is the lighting isn't that great and they, he doesn't have makeup on because his face is reflecting all the shininess and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So then, all of that is just a personal preference or people just how much they pay attention or what? Um, I probably wouldn't notice that until you could, unless you brought it up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that probably if they it probably has to do with budget. Okay. Yes, even though they have pretty well budget, it looks like they don't have the budget perhaps for like a makeup person. 
or, um, or those sorts of things. Because you're right, you know, from this particular angle, the light's not so good. That's really dark there. Everywhere, everywhere else in the in the front side of the video, uh, look much nicer. So they they had more of a budget right there. For example, it looks a little better, but still kind of dark. And then, good point there regarding makeup. If you do do more complex videos uh, and you're featuring people, then suddenly you've got to deal with a lot of these things, like I've got a blemish today, or my hair is bad, and all of that. So um, it, it depends on your level of how much you're paying attention, I suppose, to all of the details. Someone at my house will be happy to try one too. I'm not sharing with people. It's donut friend. You're supposed to. Okay, so uh, they're going to review donuts, uh, vegan donuts at Donut Friend in LA. Um, and so here it's got 587 reviews, 17 likes, and they have 142 subscribers uploaded this January. Uh, so just another kind of video, reviewing, reviewing things. Couple more quickly lists. Oops. Let's see here. Top ten WordPress plugins. So some graphics here, this was made probably in Adobe Premiere or maybe Adobe Flash or Final Cut Pro, some sort of professional graphics editing software or there's also amateur ones. But this this was designed, this was uh, animated and such and that takes a lot of effort. We're not going to be able to do that exactly, but when we use our, our uh, video editing software it has some built-in kinds of templates to do some kind of cool animations and intros and such. But this is a custom made one. Hello, my name's Theo from WebsitesMadeEasy.tv. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through our top seven plugins we use here at Websites Made Easy on all of our own websites. You should be looking to try and use some, if not all of these plugins as they will really benefit your business, grow your audience and drive more traffic to your website. Follow along with me. Step so this is mixing together a, a list type of video, and what I mean by that is that there's going to be top seven something, top ten something, top three something, bottom ten something, the worst this, the best that, some sort of list that is uh, that is whatever number that you want doesn't matter. Top three, top two even I suppose, uh, some sort of list that you are going to say the best or the worst or the most useful or the prettiest or the most interesting, whatever, anything you want. Uh, this one is mixing together also in a sense a screen uh, or definitely a screen cast type of video in that it's recording the screen and it's also in a sense mixing together a tutorial. I'm also learning that I should use these particular plugins because they're going to benefit my WordPress site. Share bar and it's also a review kind of video. Buttons into your posts, sidebars, so people visiting your website can easily like and share your content to friends and social media. There are lots of social bookmarking buttons available, which could be used in many possible ways. Edit the existing lists today. It incorporates everything from a Google snippet preview and page analysis functionality, which helps you optimize your page content. Image Okay, so just a list. You see plenty of these, of course. Top this, top that. You could do this for your own products. Again, think about you using YouTube for yourself and for your fans. For yourself, you have to create a video, perhaps based on one of these types of videos. But what about asking your friends or followers, your clients, customers, to create these kinds of videos and they get a reward. The reward could simply be internet fame, 
such as, hey, share your own review video, and we'll retweet you. Great, a retweet is free for you, but really helpful for them, or ego boosting, or whatever. It's easy for you, and you're also showing your customer loyalty and your customer uh, testimonials and such. So have your, uh, your followers do these kinds of videos. Bring it up. There's a lot of uh, talented people out there. Why not use their talent for yourself? And the last one, advertisements. These again, uh, you can use YouTube in the classic sense, creating commercials. So let me show you actually a commercial, an advertisement that I created for one of our clients. I have to look it up, uh, but it was a it was a song that came out of iMovie, basically from the iMovie library. Mm -hmm. So this particular video, um, it's uh, about thirty eight seconds long. It incorporates a variety of of shots. Um, you know, the the tripod is there. I'm holding it at that point. Uh, another shot, notice the focus was at a certain point, there was things out of focus, another reverse shot. People always ask, how long did this take? The short answer, I would say this took a day. Now, how much, what's a day? Well, this, um, the actual recording time at the restaurant probably was two hours. Uh, me and a colleague were there, both of us with our cameras to, to get different shots. And we were, uh, we were getting these different shots and recording it, just recording things. And then we got it into, in this case, it was made using iMovie. But we're going to be talking about Windows Movie Maker today. And they're interchangeable to a degree. So then the actual editing of it, that took a while. The recording of it, not that long. The editing is what's always going to take longer. And so um, to, to put these shots together, this shot, then that shot, this angle, then that angle, that's what takes a while because you could do these kinds of videos or any of these kinds of videos in a couple of ways one is that you have a plan and one is that you don't and either way will work on this one I didn't have a plan I recorded stuff me and my colleague recorded stuff at the restaurant after we played back the video an idea formed we made this one and another video we could have had a plan also let's look at this one in the kitchen This one is not as polished at all. This is just 23 seconds of look what's going on in the kitchen. No different angles, no music, but it's still got 200, 208 reviews, uh, 208 views, 12 thumbs up. So one much more polished, and one that's just um, that's just spontaneous. Uh, so this particular video we could have decided before the shoot okay we want to do this kind of commercial let's make sure we get this shot let's make sure we do this let's make sure we do that so we could have the planning and then strive toward that or we could do the opposite which is let's record stuff and see how we can put it together both ways work oftentimes I find myself doing much more of the let's record and let's see what happens which is not the best for everyone because you have to then really think on your feet and how are you gonna put it all together in the end and you might not have your exact vision in the end. For us, it seems to have worked. Here's another similar one. Let me make you more hungry.
Both of them share the same sort of style. Do you see how they both end in a similar sort of way? In that there's this uh, panning shot um, right here. You see how the camera goes like that? And then it ends at the end with a static shot of a zoom out, and then it ends at the very end with the website of the business. Throughout it all, there's just different shots, different angles right here, putting together the plate, well, uh, cooking the actual food, then actually plating it, uh, an Italian-esque sound on both. So this would be part of a series. Uh, we did these two commercials for them. We haven't done another one, but we would continue this sort of style. The owner loved them and everything, uh, but um, we just we didn't continue to make those kinds of commercials. Um, 40 seconds long, um, and really, how long did this take to create? A day. From that same day of the previous video, we shot all of these different shots, and then saw all of our footage, and then crafted an, uh, a narrative out of it, a story. Uh, for some people they can do that, for most people they can't. You have to have an idea. I'm going to go in and record this stuff. I better make sure I get these shots, and then put them together in iMovie, Windows Movie Maker, Premiere, um, what's the other one? Adobe Premiere, um, you know, the software, the video editing software, uh, Sony Vegas, etc. Using the software to create the video. Either have a plan before, have a plan after. It's, it's okay. Uh, let me show another example just to, just to show off more. Um, for the client that I mentioned in this and other classes, we've got a YouTube channel there as well. So, Let's say, for example, okay, let me show you this one. Suggested by Acoustic Coco, watch another one of our videos. So see, keep people on your channel, hopefully to subscribe. Um, so we'll be able to link our videos and have them suggest more of your videos. Now notice here, this is suggesting another one of this client's videos next. That's what I'm saying. The more videos you create, the more content that you have, so that YouTube can suggest more of your videos. If you don't have many more of your videos, it's going to suggest other kinds of craft beer videos and take you away from your channel. So once a month videos is good because then you're putting together these videos, putting more possible content to show, where then you can get more of an audience captured through YouTube. Notice also the style of this one. This is pretty much a slideshow. This is a slideshow that you can create in a bunch of kinds of software, like we'll see today also. A bunch of pictures put together, music, little text, that's it. This graphic here was designed in Photoshop, but it's just a graphic. You put it at the start, at the end, or whatever, and now you've branded your video. But it's a slideshow. It's not as complex as the other ones I've shown you. In this case, it is complex in that all of these photos that are being shown, we shot them. You know, uh, Patricia had her camera set up, and we shot all of the photos, and then we repurposed the photos. We've used those photos on the Twitter and the menu and everything, but then we said, hey, let's just put this together into a 30-second uh, video clip with some music, new video, and so far it's got 91 views. Yes? Oh, good point. So, uh, music obviously is one of the most important things if you're going to include it, but here's the big problem with music. Uh, you have to assume you cannot use any music. So that means you're not going to take that song from that CD, from that soundtrack, from your favorite artist, from your favorite classical music composer. Just write that down. You're not going to take any music. Even though you've got 10,000 songs in your library, you're not going to use any of your music. You might think, that's so limited. This Beatles song would be perfect on my video about uh, my donut shop. Well, hope you have deep pockets, because that Beatles song is not going to be free for you to use on your videos. Luckily, YouTube has a, a library of thousands of free songs for you to use. We will see that we can log into YouTube and they'll say, 
all of these songs that we can use for free. Those are the songs that I'm going to recommend you use. Uh, when we create this together, we'll, we'll, we'll see that actually. But the short answer is like when I talk about, when I talked about, remember Pixabay? I believe I mentioned it in this class. If not, pixabay.com, P I X A B A, pixabay.com. This is a website where you can go to get free images. I'm not going to do a Google search to find a picture of a taco and use it for my client. I'm probably going to violate copyright laws and not show the appropriate taco for my client. But if I need to use uh, stock images and such, Pixabay is the place where I would recommend that you go to get that generic photo of a tomato. I would rather recommend that you go to your garden and take a photo of a tomato. But if you can't do that, go to a website where you can get free pictures, like Pixabay. Don't assume that just because you find a picture online you can use it. Use appropriate pictures. Same thing with music. Just because you can uh, uh, rip a copy of that uh, song off your CD doesn't mean you can use it. Just because you downloaded that song and paid for it from iTunes doesn't mean you can use it. You only paid to have a copy for yourself. You didn't pay for commercial use. That's a huge can of worms. So go to the right places to get the content. Pixabay.com to get free pictures. And as we'll see later on when we create a YouTube account, we can go to the creator section to give us a bunch of thousands of free songs to use. Most of the time, like the one I just played right here, that one was in that library. In that library, does it say this that music sounds Italian and that sounds Spanish and this sounds yes. Peruvian? Yes, you're going to be able to filter it and search by, by mood, by instrument, by style, um, a variety of filters to find the right one, because there's a lot to look at. One more here, yes? Um, I just have a question about the music. Um, if the composer, for example, um, is a Mozart, and he doesn't have a copy of Well, that's a really good question. Copyrights do expire eventually, and especially for classical music, who uh, a lot of these pieces are hundreds of years old. Uh, technically, the music has expired, copyright, but the performance might not. So if I'm using the London Philharmonic recording from 1968, that's still copyrighted. But if I get Mozart's original music and play it myself on a piano, I'm fine. So that's the tricky part about music, the composition of the music and the playback of the music. The composition of the music may be in the public domain, like you know Handel's music or uh, Mozart and such, but that recording from Yo-Yo Ma uh, of Handel's Messiah, let's say, is still under copyright. I'm mentioning here, freemusicarchive.org. Guess what it's about? Free music. So here's another place where you can go to get music, music samples, full music tracks. You can explore this on your own. You're going to search um, different lengths or styles or, or, or whatever. And here you can also, I've found music there that can also be used because, uh, again, you've got, you've got a video that's pretty good with a little bit of music, then it'll be pretty great. Um, you have to balance, however, the music soundtrack and the voice soundtrack, which we'll look at together. But here's a couple of places where you can get some free content. Freemusicarchive.org Let me just show one more, and then we'll take a break. So like here's an unboxing video that I did. This is on my own channel just for fun stuff.
so on that one, um, no voice, just different shots of the product in video, and then photos of the product and some fades and such. We'll see how to do that, of course. And then a, a little soundtrack in the background, um, and that's another kind of... And then right here, suggest it. Why don't you watch my other video right here? So uh, it's got some views. I don't have a lot of followers, but it's got some views, some thumbs up, some thumbs down, a little... Um, you know, a little bit of uh, info at the end there to to then get you to uh, to watch uh, to go to my website and then to watch some more, more of my videos. So just lots of ways to do it. Let me just show one more because I'm really proud of this one. Put it in HD. Yeah, this projector isn't as nice as I thought it would be, so you're not going to be able to enjoy this as, as I would like. But in short, this is um, this is just a... When I had a spare moment just for fun, this is a video on this 20-year-old Nintendo game system that they made you know, 20 years ago that was a big flop, but now this sort of technology is coming back, virtual reality technology. So I wanted to do this tribute video for this product from 20 years ago that no one remembers. So uh, again, I shot all of this, I put the music on it, did the editing, and when we take our break here, when we come back, well, we're going to start to to see that we we are able to do this. This stuff can be attainable to make text and to put together videos video clips, transitions, all of that cool stuff. So it's, uh, it's about uh, 2 o'clock. Let's take a break until 2.10 and when we come back I'm going to give you some videos and we're going to learn how to do some video editing.